Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody, consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton University Hospital, London. Today is just a short query which had been sent to me. A very, uh, a very simple question. Oocyte retrieval well done, progesterone started. On the second day, the patient forgets to take cyclogest or utrogestan. What will be the impact for a blastocyst transfer? It addresses the very basics of luteal phase support. My first question will be, what was the trigger? Because that will clearly give us an idea of what is the best step to take. If it is HCG which has been given, let's go back to what supports the luteal phase. We often wrongly say that it's progesterone that supports the luteal phase. It's a treatment for luteal phase defect. But luteal phase it is prolonged by HCG. It is HCG that changes the luteal phase, supporting an ongoing pregnancy. Which means that it is an ongoing pregnancy which and the HCG which is derived from the ongoing pregnancy which will get the corpus luteum to survive. The most effective support to the corpus luteum in a fresh cycle. So if the lady has forgotten cyclogest for a long time, I would believe that the HCG given for trigger is adequate. You can add another small amount of HCG at the time of embryo transfer. And there's good evidence that in a natural cycle, a natural frozen embryo cycle, giving that significantly improves pregnancy rates. But the here problem is that if you add HCG after oocyte retrieval, you're more likely to push the patient towards ovarian hyperstimulation. Now, if an analog trigger was given, without HCG, pregnancy rates are extremely low. HCG is required in a fresh cycle to give adequate luteal phase support. Neither estrogen nor progesterone will improve the chances of pregnancy without the effect of HCG. So in this case, I would say, if HCG was given as a trigger, then it should not matter. If there hasn't been an over response, giving about 2,000 units of HCG on the day of embryo transfer will continue to support the corpus luteum. I don't know if somebody had, had looked at this paper years ago. This was almost seven or eight years ago. We started thinking of a very unique project. And we said, what happens if you give an analog trigger and then give two doses of HCG, one at egg collection and one seven days later? The reason why we thought of that idea was that we believed that if we were to do that, you would not need any cyclogest. We now know that if you can do that, you can effectively get away with giving any progesterone. The risk is of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. But that's something which is nice. And have a think about it. The fascinating part of reproductive medicine is that it asks the question why. We were taught here. We were taught what our bosses knew. Something which is very unique and something which I have a, a huge amount of admiration for of training in this country. And I think that if I can teach online in a medium that is different, where I can review articles on a regular basis, try and see what I have learned through those articles, maybe complete, maybe incomplete at times, I think we create a forum where we can have very much open discussions. But the most important thing is share these sites, share knowledge. Those days have gone where you can lock up knowledges, not make it interesting and, and make it a secret. Those days are over. It's a day in which the more you give, the more you learn. And that is the very basis of this type of education. At the end, remember, doing IVF is very simple. It takes seven days to teach IVF. It's a reproductive medicine that makes this branch of medicine the most fascinating branch of obstetrics and gynecology. And those who do it will tell you that there is no such branch as reproductive medicine. It puts the best of medicine and a very good part of surgery. 
Thank you.